Hi, I'm Dr. Toby Mama, your host on Health and Wellness. It's a pleasure to have you on my show today. I want to introduce you to my guest, Dr. Jawan Crump, 30-year-old PhD in education from William Carey University, master's in uh, speech language pathology from Louisiana Tech in Ruston, and a degree in science from, Will from the Women's University of Mississippi, Columbus. She's going to be my guest. She's going to be sharing her story of depression, of overcoming anxiety, and now fulfilling her dream. She's married, she has a son, she's a pastor's wife, and she's living her, her, her fantasy, being a wife, a mother, a daughter, a, a sister, and also being a minister of the gospel. It's a phenomenal story, but most of all, she's gonna share what she tells us about speech language pathology, why that is such an important field amongst our children. She works in the Jackson Public School District and is going to be ed educating us on what to do to help our kids. You don't want to miss it. Look forward to seeing you. Jesus is Lord. God bless you. It's an honor to have you on the show. What a pleasure, what a delight. Check us out on faithandpower.online, our website, and also write to us at P.O. Box 550, West Monroe 71294. Looking forward to hearing from you. For the last few weeks, we've had a guest on our show, Dr. Joanne Crump. She's um, EDD from William Carey, educational doctor in education, speech language pathology from Louisiana Tech, and also has a degree in science from Mississippi uh, Women's University. So it's an honor to share the platform with Dr. Crum. Dr. Crum, thank you for coming. I'm going to give you an elbow bump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she's a woman of multiple parts, and she's just recently become a pastor's wife. She, her husband took up a church in, in Jackson, uh, Mississippi, and um, she's recently become a leader in the women's area as a pastor's wife. Apart from that, she's a daughter, she's a sister, she's a mother to her one-year-old yes. one year old son. And she's also a speech language pathologist, like you've heard over the last two shows. So I wanted to delve a bit into this unique individual called Joanne Crump. So you you, were, you grew up as the oldest child. Eight years later, your mom had another child? That was like a, was it a surprise or just waiting eight years was just a part of the plan? It was begging. It came with begging. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it was definitely planned. Okay. <laughs> Tell me a bit about your dad, because it's your dad. You said your dad was a Catholic yes. and your mom was a Baptist. And yes. they seem to have stayed together for the last 30 years. So yes. they made it work. They did. <laughs> um, dad, born and raised Catholic. Um, mom, born and raised Baptist. And then my dad... As far as much as I can recall, for 20 plus years, he didn't attend church. Um, I'm not real sure what happened or why he stopped going, um, but f at least till I was 24, 25, I don't recall him going to church. He worked hard, yeah. Yes, um, <laughs> and so... That was just that. We Now, my mom and I, our services were every second and fourth Sunday. Okay. We, we attended church um, every Sunday, even on first, third, and fifth Sundays, we would visit other churches. Oh, really? And so on second and fourth Sundays, we would go to our home church, but he didn't go. And so Tell me the they churches made it you work. like to visit. You know, <laughs> in the Jackson area, we attended Hope Springs okay. um, for quite a while, Black's Chapel, okay. and I think that was pretty much okay. it. Okay. You didn't go into the other, like, Word of Life or... No, the, I, I don't... The, the Word of Life wasn't open there. then. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. it wasn't. And the other ones, you know, um, what's the other big church in Brandon? There's a Pine Lake. Oh, quite a few others. I don't think it was open then. Really? Now, oh. I don't think. Now, it may have been. I, I don't know. And then Jackson Revival Center is kind of the 
the major churches in the area. Okay, in my sounds area. good. Okay, so they made it work. So I, I mean, I mean, tell me a bit about. So now, tell me about your dad. He started coming to church how many years ago? Okay, so um, strange story. My dad um, introduced me to my husband. Really? It was not an arranged marriage. It, okay. it, it really wasn't. Um, but he introduced me to him, and Cedric was an assistant um, minister at his church. And while he was there... Well, how did your husband know your dad? They met um, because my dad was a UPS package car driver in downtown Jackson. Cedric worked as a runner or in the mail room something like that and he liked Cedric so much he said you've got to marry my daughter I think he <laughs> I think he tried to get me to meet him for about a year oh really and I was like I don't want to meet this weird guy that you keep talking about and so um all of that happened Cedric and I met um and I ended up marrying Cedric and all of a sudden my dad my my dad started attending church sporadically okay. anytime Cedric would speak. Oh. And so as Cedric started to speak more, my dad, my dad started to come more. <laughs> and then Cedric was um, chosen to be the pastor, and, said, and then he started to come even more. Awesome. <laughs> and then my dad um, gave his testimony and said that it was amazing that he thought that he was introducing uh, me to Cedric, but God was actually introducing um, him to him. So, oh, wow. him to Christ. Wow, that's awesome. Yes. I mean, wow, that is so powerful. What's the name of your husband's church? New McRaven Hill Missionary okay. Baptist Church. In somewhere in Jackson? In, yes, in okay. Jackson, Mississippi. Praise God. That's a powerful testament. Tell us a bit about how you're getting into the pastoral wife role it's always a big issue in the african-american church you know you have to wear the big hat yeah. and the long skirts and the you know the fans and yes <laughs> um so it is a transition i am i'm only 30. Wow. Um, when he was chosen to be pastor i was 28 29 years old i think something like that um, and so it was very different. I, I was actually 28. And so it was very different. Um, and I did not know any pastor's wives that were as young as me. Um, everyone else was older. And so I did find one other young pastor's wife and she became my, my mentor and friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had to know for myself who I was in Christ, um, what I wanted um, others to see, um, and what Christ wanted others to see through me, um, and not to take on any, um, anything as a tradition, but what he wanted. Um, mm. Because it's so easy to just do something right. off of routine. Um, and so I, I wanted to make sure that I was doing what he wanted and not mm -hmm. what the people wanted. Right. A lot of people tell us that you, ble you bless where you bleed from. Mm -hmm. I heard that from a T.D. Jake sermon. So I want you to share your, you know, your, your, your scars as well. It's, it's good to put you on TV and tell us all the great things you've done. But I tell people my, fault, my failings, my foibles, my mm -hmm. frustrations, as well as my my, my, my fruitfulness, because I believe people will learn from my experience as well. So in a nutshell, I want you to describe your, your work of faith in the, when you were in your post-grad here in Ruston and in Louisiana, in Monroe. Just without naming names, without revealing identity, tell us those challenges you faced in your work while you were here and how God brought you through it. You don't have to name people, just tell us how God helped you through that circumstance that really put a big uh, task kind of challenge to your faith. Okay. Um, while I was here at, um, at Tech, um, grad school was definitely tough. Every grad school is tough. It's, it's not just Tech. Um, and so while I was here, I had been diagnosed with anxiety 
years ago. And so, but I was okay. And so when I came um, to grad school, it seemed like the anxiety skyrocketed. Um, and so I ended up having to take medication and I went from one pill to three pills. Um, and it, it, it was absolutely hor hor horrific. Um, I thought that people that I was confiding in um, were going to be helpful and they were going to be Christian-like and they ended up um, playing on me uh, or, and, and even praying on, on those things. And um, there were just small um, things that I thought I would be able to tell them that they took and they they ran with, um, and I was able, luckily, um, to have two very um, good friends and then um, people at the church that were able to pray me through mm -hmm. and literally pull me out of, um, of those tough situations. And um, there were moments that I literally felt like suicide was the only way out. Um, I remember losing like 12 pounds in nine days it, and it, it was literally horrific like I literally don't know how well, I, I remember it. there was a day in church Pastor Shane said there's a girl here who's planning to kill herself and mm -hmm. I think you stepped out mm -hmm. you know that was a, I think it was a Wednesday or a Sunday evening mm -hmm. I think it was a Wednesday night right and that was, that was one of the first times I met you Mm -hmm. So that was how deep in the doldrums you were mm -hmm. of depression. And I was literally coming to every, I would leave home and I would come to service because that was the only bit of peace that I could find. Like my mind would just race and race and race and, and race until I stepped into the doors of the church. And it was like, this is where the where peace is mm -hmm. and I literally never wanted to leave mm -hmm. wow that's um and and God helped you you came through you graduated and you went back and seven years eight years later you're married mm -hmm. I mean what would you say to those girls today as a Christian as a pastor's wife as a as a as a young person I mean a lot of young girls are out there and they, they prey on other girls because, you know, they think they're prettier, they think they're, they, 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 they have what the other girl doesn't have, they have a guy that the other girl doesn't have. So what would you say to a young girl watching today who is maybe a victim of the same thing and she thinks, I'm not good enough, nobody wants me, I'm, I'm the reject, I'm the dredge, I'm the, I'm the ridicule. What would you say to that girl in church? Because they say church hurt. There's no hurt like church hurt. Yeah. You know. What would you say to that girl in the church who is facing this kind of, I don't want to use the word abuse, but it's kind of like verbal and emotional mm -hmm. trauma. You know, I feel like the females, because we don't realize it, but the, the females are emotionally vulnerable in comparison to the males. Okay. You know, so there are girls out there who are hurting, and I think you can speak a word to their lives. Okay. Um, young, a young woman, you are beautiful. Um, you are loved. And despite how you may feel at this current moment, um, take a moment and breathe and know that this is just a moment. Um, Remember why you are here, and if you don't know that, take a moment to figure that out. Um, find something that you love and find something that you um, want to do and pour your heart into that because through that you can bless someone else and keep in, in mind that there is someone that loves you and above all else, God loves you, mm. and you can and you will make it. Wow, thank you so much. Tell us a bit about what advice do you have for pastor's wives? You've been a pastor's wife for two years now. 
what advice do you have for pastors' wives? Because people put them on a pedestal, and they think they don't do any wrong. They cook the perfect meal. They 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 change diapers like no one else. They, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know they're like superwoman. So what would you say to your colleagues who are pastors' wives and who are struggling? Yes. A lot of them, I I don't know the statistics, but they tell us seventy percent of marriages in the church end up in divorce and if you look closely at that a lot of them are pastors wives and we don't know why but we think it's i personally think it's the is the strain on the relationship from the ministry okay a lot of pastors end up getting married to the ministry and they lose that connection with the wife and it, can, it takes a toll on the on the on the emotions of the family so talk to those pastors wives as well and tell them what do you think we can do to make pastors' wives healthier as a, as a ministry, as a, as a colleague? Um, to my fellow ladies, be kind to yourself. Um, be sweet to yourself. You are important. Um, take some time for yourself and know that um, those around you need you. Um, there's something that you have always wanted to do for yourself. Take that moment and do it and and know that you deserve it. Um, and whatever it is that you feel just has to be done, there is someone else that can do it and it and there there will be another moment that it can be done. And last but not the least is how do you talk to your fellow wives and mothers I, I i i bring this up every year every time i have a guest because i believe that the greatest disservice in the african-american community and i say this unequivocal is the single parent home we have done the studies and we have seen the statistics and if you look 60 years ago there were not as many single parent homes in the african-american community as they are today and we ask ourselves why we have such dysfunctional kids and delinquent children. And I say it over and over again, we've got to change that social demographic where 80% of African-American homes are being raised by a single parent in some communities. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying you are wrong or he's wrong or she's wrong. I'm just saying that as a community, we've got to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So as a, as a professional wife, as a as a wife and a mother, talk to your fellow wives out there about how you've been married for five years. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's a lot of time in, that, in, in a lot of people's books, you know. <laughs> I've been married 17 years, and that's a long time in some people's books. So I think you have earned the stripes to speak to wives. Talk to them about sustaining the love in their relationship, and especially when you have a child. Because at times people make that excuse, oh, the child made us separate, the child put us apart. Well, how did you handle it, having a baby, still staying in love with your husband, keeping the home as a functional unit together? Talk to those women out there who are struggling with being wives and sustaining their love and their relationship and their marriage. Um, one thing that I have, um, or a few things that I have had uh, to learn um, is that um, being a, a wife is a tough thing and so once you establish that um, you can get that out of the out of the way and you can um, go ahead and take on what the challenge is then um, being a mother you know that your child is important um, but if you're going to look at it from a Christian standpoint being a wife is your first job um, and so with that you have to remember um, that you're going to have to um, for, uh, forgive you're going to have to be quiet uh, sometimes you're going to have to say some uh, some things you're you're going to have to be there for him um, and there will be moments when things won't be easy. There will be moments when you will remember why you fell in love with him. Um, but just know that it is work. It is, and it is a job. You don't love your job every day, but you don't jump up and quit it every day. 
Um, so you have to be willing to put in work um, and you have to be willing to learn something new. He is changing, you are changing. Um, so you have to be willing to change with him. Um, and just as he has to be willing to do that same thing. And if you guys need to spend some time, um, dinners, movies, dates, find some time for that. Do something special for him. Find out you guys love language. Do what, do something for that person that is special for them. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Tell us about your miracle son. I, I don't want to ah. bust the bubble, but... I think it's a testimony that will bless other people who are listening. Jo uh, jo Juwan has a miracle son, and I just think it's a testimony that put a smile on my face when I heard it, and I think it will put a smile on anyone's face. So just share your, st your story. Okay, um, so um, got married, worked hard to get a son. For some reason, it wasn't happening. Um, then we found out that I had a pituitary mass, um, and that was seemingly devastating, and we thought that we had fixed, uh, fixed that. Um, then after that was fixed, um, it seemed like it still wasn't happening, um, and then we found out that my uh, fallopian tubes were blocked. Um, and then it seemed like the very essence of what every little girl dreams of, of being a mommy, had been snatched from me. And so um, at that point, I knew what, what Hannah felt like when she literally weeped and weeped and weeped. And her, her husband asked her, well, am, am, am I not enough? Wow. And she was like, well, it, I mean, you can't give me what I am begging for. And so... Um, at that point, I understood. And so I remember begging and praying, God, God, please. And so um, God did it in the way that he felt um, was what he wanted to do. Um, Cedric and I did go through IVF um, to get Jackson, um, and it did work um, on our first try. Um, and I consider that a, 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 a miracle, miracle in itself right. because that doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't have to happen. And I've, IVF is, doesn't push God's hand. Right. Um, and so we have Jackson. He is a one-year-old little miracle, and he is smarter than Cedric and I both. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he keeps us on our toes, and we are absolutely grateful for him. So tell me, what would you want Cedric, what would you want Jackson to have, and I'm, I'm pushing this out there, that you didn't have growing up? What would, what would you pray to God that Jackson has in, 30, in the next 30 years of his life that you felt you didn't have, that you would really want him to have the benefit of? Because you had a great life. You grew up with two parents. A lot of kids don't grow up with two parents. You had a sibling who, who still talks to you and doesn't try to outshine you, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you, you know, so you grew up with most of the niceties. I mean, you, your dad and mom you both had professional careers. Mm -hmm. I guess you had enough to eat and mm -hmm. you had a roof over your head. But think about Jackson in 30 years. What are your dreams for him? And how much more would you want him to accomplish and um, to aim for than you had? It's interesting that you ask me that um, because I see a therapist and I, I actually told her this. Um, I want Jackson to have seen more of the world than I have. Um, unfortunately, I have really only seen the southern states okay. <laughs> um, and I've been to California and Michigan that's not, that's not bad and it's like <laughs> oh, but what about the rest of the world and so I really want him to see more of the world so that he can understand cultures and 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 people so that right. he can be a global thinker that's a great answer. So Dr. Crump has been my guest for the last three weeks. She's a 
she's a talker, as you can imagine. She can talk till the cows come home. And it's been a joy having her on the show and reconnecting with her after so many years and seeing the great work God has done in her life. It's, it's a delight. I mean, this was a girl who, when Pastor Shane said, there's a young girl who wants to kill herself, literally came out in a church of 2,000 people and stepped out and the whole church prayed for her. She was in the battle, she was in the battle of her mind. She was fighting a demonic spirit and she, she's, she's, still, she's still fighting every day, but God is giving her the victory. God has sent a support partner who prays with her. God has sent her a family, a support system. And, you know, one of the things I remember about you was you told me you were going to see your parents and they met you in Vicksburg. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is such a close family because mm -hmm. they had to travel one hour mm -hmm. and you had to travel one hour. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but I, when, I, when you told me that in 2000 and maybe it was 2013 or so, mm -hmm or 12, I was like, that is a close family. Mm -hmm. For both of you to literally sacrifice, to come and meet somewhere that was convenient, mm -hmm. it told me that your dad and mom cared about you. So that was my first insight, my first pigeonhole into your family. And I said, this is a special family. And I've not met your mom or dad, but I think they raised a gem. I think they made, a, they made somebody worthy of emulation for the african-american community and i think god is going to take you far as he leads you and i want you to stay strong stand on the word keep speaking the word keep hoping keep trusting and keep doing what you know to do and the the the, the light at the end will justify all the darkness you know the bible says you walk through the valley of the shadow of death a shadow never killed anybody it may look like a terrible thing but a shadow never killed anybody What's going to matter is how you come out at the end. You know, people tell me, oh, I failed medical school. Oh, I, it doesn't matter. Nobody comes to your class in med your, 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 your medical school exam and says, your, when you're seeing a patient, and says, how many exams did you fail? No, they only care about the end. You're a doctor. You're a language pathologist. So the end literally justifies the means. So I want to encourage you, stay focused. Hold on to the horns of the altar. Don't give him. Don't quit the faith. Don't turn back now. Keep believing, keep trusting. His word is guaranteed to come to pass. The Bible says in Luke 16, the 16 that not one word will fail of what God has promised you. Not one word. I want you to believe God for your miracle. Write to me, Toby Mama, P.O. Box 550 71294. Visit us, three, uh, uh, Clarion Inn, June 26, every last Friday of the month, and look us up. On Facebook, faith on Facebook and our website, faithandpower.online. Looking forward to hearing from you. Jesus is Lord. God bless you. <music>